learn a little bit more about how to found a Partners Campus student chapter. How to found can be broken down into four somewhat easy steps. First is to learn about partners. So I have a little checkbox here because participating in the information session is one great way to learn about partners. We also encourage you to explore the website and the Partners Campus website and the Facebook page to learn a little bit more if you still have questions. On the Facebook page, you can also reach out to people with questions about their experience. The second step that we'll talk about is submitting an application for charter. Partners Campus student chapters are now officially recognized as chapters within the Partners of the Americas network. This means they have voice and vote in the network, meaning that they, as a chapter, can participate in international decisions that are made by the network. They can vote for board members. They can also elect or nominate members of their Partners Campus student chapter to run for positions on the board of directors at the international level level. This also means that there are some requirements associated with becoming a formal chartered Partners Campus student chapter. So we'll talk a little bit more about what those are. There's a one-year mentorship period upon chartering or upon the first year of, of being chartered within the Partners Network. So that will be completed as well. And then finally, rechartering annually. In the traditional Partners of the Americas chapter network, annual dues can be paid, but the charter process only happens every few years. So when I say the charter process, I mean to be approval by the international office of the board of directors to remain part of the Partners of the Americas network. So this will continue to happen with Partners Campus student chapters, but because there's so much transition in the very nature of a student organization, we are going to have structures in place for student chapters to be rechartering annually, at least through the international office, so that we can ensure smooth transition between leaders in the network. About those charter requirements, those include on having official recognition by the host institution where the Partners Campus student chapter is going to be based. Most host institutions, most schools or universities or other educational institutions have some form of student organizations that exist there. So they might already have some structures in place for how to work with student organizations, how to be officially affiliated with the university, etc. Some do not. So in this case, we are asking students to really reach out to their university and find out what they would need to do to become officially affiliated with their university. And so this doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to represent their university with a logo and everything on, on all fronts, but this does mean that their university is making a commitment to support the Partners Campus student chapter to provide some maybe space to work, to have an advisor, maybe in the ideal case to support fundraising efforts or a place where students can accept donations that will then be applied to the work that they're doing. A whole variety of different actions that an educational institution that is supportive of a partner's campus might take. We in the international office will be figuring out what it is that partner's campus student chapters who are already at institutions, what it is that they've already had to go through, what benefits they get associated with the university, and what their responsibilities are so that we can share that with others who maybe don't already have a structure at the university and they can maybe approach their university with a letter, with a draft letter, a draft set of benefits and requirements to use. Another requirement for charter is adopting the Partners Campus Student Chapter Constitution. There is sort of a shell of a constitution that's available on the website. We're going to be updating that over the course of the next month in preparation for the workshop that's coming up on December 4th. The constitution of a Partners Campus student chapter can be self-created or this template can be used as the basis for that. Another requirement for charter is that the Partners Campus maintains at least 10 members with at least four officers and a faculty or staff advisor. In Juan's case, they have four faculty and staff advisors, two faculty and two administrative staff who help guide them in the different facets of, of what it takes to run a partner's campus student organization. So all of these requirements, at least 10 members, at least four officers and a faculty or staff advisor comprise a partner's campus student chapter. And each of those members and officers and ideally the staff advisor as well would all be registered at least as individual members uh, in Partners Connect so that we can track who is a member of Partners Campus. And we'll talk about that requirement in a minute here. 
Also, each Partners Campus student chapter needs to hold regular meetings and elections. Pretty simple and straightforward for an organization to run is that they have to have regular meetings and some form of elections that are defined in the Constitution that they write for themselves. We also ask that they complete all of the required trainings. At this time, we don't have posted trainings on the Partners of the Americas website, but those are all in development. And the training that will be coming up on December 4th, that month-long training or engagement workshop, will eventually become a required training. So we certainly encourage everyone to participate in that if you have a chance at this time. Speaking of Partners Connect, a Partners Campus student chapter needs to maintain a student chapter Partners Connect profile by having members and officers and faculty advisors who are are associated with your Partners Campus student chapter that will create automatically a membership list and an officer list so everybody can be in contact with one another so that the international office has access to your membership list. And so we know who's engaged, who's in a leadership role, and maybe who even are alumni of Partners Campus student chapters. And the student chapter as a whole also will have a separate profile, much like the existing chapter profiles that you'll see on Partners Connect. So this gives a little bit more background on on what the whole chapter, what the whole student chapter is doing. So others in the network can, can see what's going on and be involved. Another requirement is to submit Partners Counts Hour. Partners Counts is the way that we on the international level can track what volunteers in our network are doing, really more so how many hours they're contributing as volunteers. And this really helps to quantify the impact that we're having in in the community. It's certainly a quantity, and we also look for partners campuses to submit an annual plan and an annual report. So we can also track more of the qualitative and the in the impact stories that come out of our network. And the annual plan is something that will be hopefully developed as part of the training that's going to be coming up next month and then will need to be submitted again every year. Also on our website, there is a template or an outline for the annual plan that is there already, but will also be updated based on the updates to the Partners of the Americas Network. So you can look there for that as well. Finally, as part of registering your um, Partners Campus student chapter and Partners Connect, we ask for you to pay annual dues, um, which for a Partners Campus student chapter are $150. That is really your contribution to be part of the Partners of the Americas Network. And those then are renewed every year. And at that time that you renew them every year, you will be updating your Partners Connect profile and hopefully updating your membership and officer list at that time as well. And the things that are starred on this list, we understand that during the initial charter process, some of them realistically just don't happen yet, like having an annual report if you're a brand new Partners Campus student chapter or recording any of your partners counts hours. So those things are assessed upon application for recharter, which happens annually. And you'll be informed of that from the partners international office. There are a couple things also that um, can lead to sort of a gold standard distinction, which on the on the broader chapter network level, this refers to having the ability to implement programs through your partners campus student chapter. And we're still from the international office and from the board of directors defining exactly how this would work in the context context of a student chapter. But these gold standard distinctions really are also just things that make you stand out as a Partners Campus student chapter. So things like having a strong active membership that's committed to implementing programs in your local community, having leadership in the Partners Campus student chapter that has experience in organizational functions like accounting and monitoring and evaluation, strategic planning. As students, we understand that you might still be developing some of these skills. So seeking opportunities to to grow these skills really sets you apart as a student chapter. Also, we're looking for um, Partners Campus student chapters that have demonstrated experience with program implementation on an organizational level. Also, the ability to manage financial transactions. And so this is where um, I was talking about support that you can get from your educational institution if it's something that they're able to provide, if they're able to provide sort of a student organization bank account of sorts, or if they're able to administer funds that come in. For example, we have a, a Partners Campus student chapter that is putting together a large-scale project and they're seeking donations from businesses and community organizations. But in order to receive those funds, they need to have some sort of bank account that isn't a personal student's bank account. So they're working really closely with their university to be able to receive those funds and manage them. We're also looking for significant participation in Partners of the Americas events and trainings and, and other things that are offered on the international level, especially in our annual or biannual conventions and what 
Remote Works workshops. Also, we're looking for Partners Campus student chapters that have exemplified their local partnerships and have a strong local network to work with. And another gold standard is for those Partners Campuses who have additional officer positions beyond those traditional ones that will be defined in the in the Constitution, like the President, the Vice President, the Treasurer, and the Secretary. We also look for those who have communications liaisons and who have a membership officer to manage all of the membership things. And finally, you can take a look on the Partners Campus website for videos that document the experience of each of these Partners Campus student leaders who are listed on this slide. Tell you a little bit more about the impact that being a leader and Partners Campus has had on them and on their communities. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more of an intro into what's going on in the Partners Campus student chapter realm. Certainly feel free to send an email to campus at partners.net after the session or post on Facebook any questions that you have um, so that we can start to develop a, an FAQ section. Thank you all again for participating and have a great day.